Welcome back to the channel. You know, October is the month of spooks and haints, and uh, frequently you see in the news around this time of year all the underwater ghost towns. But some people might not know why they're under the water. This video will revolve around the underwater ghost towns, and a few of them that you may not have heard of, maybe some cool pictures too. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell button down below. Be sure to check out my merch page. Link can be found in, in the description below. Might see something there you like. A good gift for the holidays, Christmas. Give it a look see. Around the time that World War II came knocking at our door, we needed a way to make lots of material, lots of product, very fast. And the way we were doing it just wouldn't work. Because, see, places like the Aluminum Company of America were using their own hydroelectric power and their own steam plants to support their, their manufacturing process. And that just wasn't sustainable with the amount of material that we needed very quickly. So, TVA and the river system in Tennessee became the United States government secret weapon against the Axis powers. It began with the crash construction of Douglas, Fontana, Cherokee, and some other major important dams that impounded several major important rivers that eventually, through the process, go on to make up the Tennessee River. As such, this created huge acreages of water, and it made a huge floodplain. And as such, several homesteads, some towns, historical sites, they all were lost to the impoundment of these rivers. With this, the state would use eminent domain, they would buy the property outright, or they would just quite simply force you off when the water came rising up through your door. Some people went willingly, some did not. For instance, this is a record from my great-great-grandmother, Claudia Myers. She lived in the community of Bridgeport in Hawkins County, and she had 52 acres, a house, and a barn and she was paid the whopping price of $30,000 in today's money for her land. This is the foundation for her barn. It is still there. This is just one of many things that you'll find when the lake goes down to Winter Pool. You'll also find cemeteries such as this one, some still partially submerged in the water, and caves as well. Let's dig into this video, starting with none other than Bean Station. Quick shout out to Craig Campbell and pastmaps.com, link down below, for letting me use the maps off of his website for the making of this video. It's still early access and the project is still in its infancy, but I know a good project when I see it. I encourage you guys to go sign up for early access to view more maps like this from your area. Thank you, pastmaps.com and Craig Campbell. What you're seeing right now is a 1935 overhead topographic map of the area, how it looked back then. Here is a satellite comparison. You can see the lake, so the roads are under the water, and all that good stuff. Now when the lake is at Winter Pool, you can still get down to Bean Station, the original town, and see some of the original town foundations. The Bean Station itself was first settled in 1775. Or at least it was scouted out by William Bean and Daniel Boone back then. Now, just to go a little further with these maps, what you're seeing here are a couple of other communities known as Noyton and Crosby, just a little on further down. You can still make some of them out. Those aren't really ghost towns, they're just passers-by. But anyway, Bean Station was home to the historic Whiteside Inn, which was the largest tavern between D.C. and New Orleans, and it's seen all kinds of people of prominence. Unfortunately, all of that history was gone whenever Cherokee Dam was built. The Whiteside Inn was uh, dismantled, but measurement of every room was taken. Bean Station had its own train station. It had its own post office. It was close to the Tate Springs Hotel. Man, it had it all. Look out for a video coming of the original Bean Station. Let's move on. Old Butler, it's in Carter slash Johnson County, up there in Watauga Lake. 
Originally settled in 1760, you have the town of Old Butler, of course. Well, then it was just called Butler. Since its inception as a town, it had been plagued by the flooding constantly of the Watauga River. And it happened so often that it just became a way of life, and these people learned to work around it. But it wouldn't be until 1940, when six people died, and the nearby town of Elizabethton was almost wiped off the map as well that TVA and their engineers said, hey, you know, it almost wiped off this town, lost a railroad, we gotta do something. And so they did. When Watauga Dam was started in 1942, it was almost immediately stopped due to the need to divert resources to the other more important dams on down the river. During that time, TVA ended up buying the entire town for the mere price of $35,000. There were plans drew up for how they was going to get the community moved and all that, and they actually did move a few houses. Reportedly, one family slept in their house the night before, had the house moved the next day, and slept in it that next night, and the ice in the fridge hadn't even melted yet. The original town of Butler has also only surfaced twice in the last 80 years, with a reunion being held at the second uh, time it was above water. Local legends also say that the townsfolk of Butler petitioned TVA to flood their town because it was infested with vampires. It's also said that if the town stays above water for too long, then the vampires can come out of their graves. Is that true? Never know. It's only been above water twice. Loyston, Union County under Norris Lake. Established around the year 1800 by the Stokesbury family, we have Loyston. Wouldn't be too long after it was established that John Loy would come through and build us a foundry here. When the town got its first post office, it became known as Loy's Crossroads. And then later that was changed to Loyston. At the time Norris Dam was being built and talked about, there was only 70 residents this small little town. Some of them naturally didn't want to leave. That had been their family home for generations. Some of them did. Of those that did leave, some of them moved just up the road and formed a community called New Loyston, although that community's been long gone now. As far as I could tell, the town has never surfaced above the water since it was originally flooded. However, today, the area around it is commonly known as the Loyston Sea. Now that's all for today folks, and I hope you liked the video. Now this isn't every single underwater ghost town in Tennessee. This is just a few of the more popular and easy to find ones. So with that being said, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please visit my merch page, and again thanks to Craig Campbell at PassMaps.com for letting me use the maps on his website.